The CBS New York Book Club is busy starting to read The Little Liar by Mitch Albom. Yesterday, CBS 2's Mary Calvi revealed that after thousands of votes, the novel was named the club's reader's choice. Following the announcement, Mary talked to author Mitch Albom about the story and how he started his writing career in Queens. First off, congratulations on all of your success with The Little Liar, already a bestseller. We're thrilled for you. Oh, thanks, Mary. That's very kind of you. Thank you. So I wanted to ask you, so your books have been sold around the world, over 40 million copies, but many of you may not know about your humble beginnings. Was it the Queen's Tribune? It was the Queen's Tribune, uh, which they gave out in supermarkets back in those days. And I picked one up. Uh, I was a musician at the time. I picked one up uh, in my little basket at the supermarket, and it said, if you have free time, we could use some help writing our newspaper stories. And I worked at night as a musician, so I, I went down there. And the same day I went down, they gave me an assignment uh, to write a story about parking meters. And I'd never written anything before. And uh, I went out with my notebook, uh, like Woodward and Bernstein, because I had seen the movie, All the President's <laughs> Men. And um, I wrote a story. That was the first thing I wrote, was in the Queen's Tribune. And it came out the next week, and I saw my name on it. And I got that little tingle in my stomach, you know, and uh, I've been writing ever since. And the rest is history. So exciting. So now as we begin diving into this book with the book club, can you give us a nugget, you know, something you love about the story that we should make sure to look out for? It's a story about hope. And, you know, people might not think that because they hear that it's, it's got a Holocaust backdrop. But there's a moment during that time in the concentration camps where the family uh, that we focus on is all gathered together inside the barracks and the grandfather despite all the horror that they're going through and the starvation and the treatment he insists that every night they say one good thing that happened that day one good thing and what can you say about a good thing that happens during the day in a concentration camp so one person says i had an extra spoonful of soup and one person says, you know, I, 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 my rotted tooth fell out. One says the guard didn't beat me today. One says I saw a bird. And that idea of retaining hope, despite the worst possible circumstances, circumstances that you and I will never have to go through, hopefully, in our lives, um, it speaks to the human spirit. And it's a lot about what The Little Liar is about, about despite the things that people go through. In the end, we're motivated by hope, a desire to be forgiven, and a desire to find love. And uh, that little scene was a big part of that. And the novel centers around a little boy who cannot tell a lie. Yeah, a uh, little Nico who's never told a lie in his life. And then he gets tricked by the Nazis into standing on the train platform and telling the people who are getting on the trains that they're going to new jobs and new homes and everything's going to be fine. He thinks he's telling them the truth. And if he does this, then they're going to let him go back to his family. And only on the last day does he discover that his family is being put into one of these boxcars and that these trains are actually going to the concentration camps. And he, he realizes too late that the first lie of his life is the worst lie he's ever going to tell, even though he was tricked into it. And the story follows him for the next 40 years and shows the ramifications of that lie on him, on his family, on on the girl that loves him, and even on the Nazi that tricked him. Uh, so it's a you know it's very much a parable about truth and lying and, and the price we pay when we lose the truth. Mitch Album, thank you so much. Congratulations again. And we look forward to having you join us for the great big virtual book club meetup. I appreciate it. Thank you for uh, selecting me in your book club, and I'm, I'm happy to be a part of it. This book sounds amazing. The book club will read The Little Liar through the December holidays and then celebrate with a great big virtual book club meetup with the author where you can ask the questions. And you can also join the CBS New York Book Club Facebook group and read along.